So quick recap, I've been working on this mystery quilt for a while now. Um, it is the Laundry Basket Quilts 2023 Summer Mystery Quilt, and I've been attempting to turn the partial seams construction into a quilt as you go sort of construction. That means it's going to get a little crazy in the middle. I'm going to have to uh, do a little bit of Frankensteining, but uh, it should be fun. I'm, I have, I'm optimistic. So as you can see here, I have finished machine quilting the panels. I did very detailed lines around all of the motifs, all these flowers, and then after that, I did some really lazy echoing all around the quilt. But I'm not quite done quilting all the way because after I connect all these panels, I'm going to do some hand quilting too. So I'll probably add just a little bit in these sections here, and then I'm going to do some details in the flowers. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with these guys yet, but I also want to um, put spines in my leaves too. The reason I'm going to wait to hand quilt until after it's all connected is because I don't want my quilting hoop to accidentally throw anything off or make any of my uh, rectangles get wonky. So as of now, I'm ready to start adding the connecting strips to these panels so I can put these puppies together. I'm going to start by adding this strip to the top. It is one and one eighth inch wide and uh, ideally you would cut it to the size you need but I'm lazy so I just have this whole width of fabric strip and I'm going to cut it down later. So I'm going to start by basting with Elmer's glue with the right sides together. So I'm just going to lay this here and then I'll get my trusty glue going and I'm just going to add a fine bead of glue all the way down the side. I need to fill in once in a while. Next, I'm going to set it in place as accurately as I can. I wasn't very accurate when I was making my sample, so I'm going to try and be much more careful this time. And then once I'm sure everything is nice and lined up, I'm going to hit it with the iron just to heat set that glue so nothing comes loose. It really doesn't take very much time if you don't use too much glue. If you just use a fine bead of glue, it'll heat set really quickly. If you use a lot, it's going to take a minute. But then I've got this nice strong hold going. Now I'm going to flip this piece over. You can see all my leftover over here. I'm going to trim that off later. Now I'm going to add this strip. It nicely matches my backing fabric. It's two inches wide and then folded in half. And this is another change that I made from my sample. I just added a quarter inch just for just a, the tiniest bit of extra wiggle room. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a nice fine bead of glue just like I did last time, all the way across. And then I'm going to line everything up as accurately as I can because accuracy really does matter from what I found with this technique and a quick press. So now it's nice and secure and I can take this over to my sewing machine. When it's time to sew, I fold the block over because it makes it so much easier to get it through my machine without that extra bulk hanging off the end of that work table. So I fold that in half, I bump up my stitch length a couple um, lengths and I use the needle down position to sew this because I'm gonna stop and start to make sure I'm sewing accurately. So at this point I have the front piece stitched down and the back strip stitched down and I do an extra double check to make sure that this didn't come loose or get folded or anything and it's all caught underneath that edge. Now I'm going to take a minute to just cut these down just a little bit. Not all the way. I'm going to cut that more accurately in a minute. Same with this side. And now I'm going to finger press this open, but I'm going to leave the back strip alone. So I'm going to finger press this. Make sure that no fabric is left unturned. And then bring back in my trusty iron to get a nice press. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and trim the uh, ends more accurately, but I'm going to do that 
off camera because that's sort of boring. And then I can move on to the next step. So I put my two panels up here on the design wall so you could get a better picture of what's going on. So here is um, one panel and here is the connecting strip. Here's my second panel and I'm going to connect the short side of this panel with the long side of this panel, which results in just a little bit of an offset right down there. So I'm going to take these to my ironing board and I'm going to align from this edge and I'm going to glue base the two sides together, right sides together. So I have my fabric all set up and ready to go so I don't mess anything up at the board. And this is my short side and this is my long side and then I'm going to add my glue like always. Now I'm just going to lift it up and press it into place. And the weight of this panel is dragging it down a little, so I'm going to heat set as I go. Well, that didn't go quite as neat as I was hoping, but it'll have to do. So I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and sew it on down. Now here is the front view of this connecting strip here. I'm going to give it a little press and then I'll flip it over. Okay, this is what it looks like from the back and I can tell that my seam allowances were just a little bit uh, scant, I think, because this should be a little closer together. There shouldn't be as much of a gap here as there is. But I think I'm gonna live with it because my flap, the strip on the back, covers everything just fine. So that's the next step. I'm gonna press this over and glue baste it down. Now this is getting pretty hard to see with <laughs> this pattern, but I'm going to add another line of glue on my seam line here. And I'm gonna fold this over and then in order to secure that, you can either machine sew or hand sew this down. Originally, I was thinking I would probably machine sew this down because it'd be faster, but I started noticing from my sample how, um, how obvious it is, how, how obvious the connecting strips are in my sample because there's no quilting on them at all. So for my big quilt, I'm gonna hand sew this down and add some quilting on the front to make it uh, not quite so glaringly unquilted. So I'm going to continue doing these steps with my um, all my panels until I have everything connected in a nice big square with a little tiny square hole in the middle. And then it's time to do some Frankensteining. So this is what the strip looks like from the front with a little bit of quilting just down the center. This is what the strip looks like from the back. And from a distance, it is really hard to see this. It like blends in really well with the dark fabric and the busy pattern. So the next step is filling in this hole. So you'll see that I've already added the fabric on the back. It's just a simple patch that's half an inch bigger on all sides than the hole here. So it looked something like this. This is the one I made for the front. I used a double layer of freezer paper and then I folded the edges over for my seam allowance and then I just uh, attached it to the back just like I did with all those strips. So I'm going to do that for the front too, but first I'm going to add a little bit of batting so that it's not just two layers of fabric. There's the fabric and the batting and then another layer of fabric, like a normal quilt. So I'm going to start by adding just a little bit of glue down here to attach the binding, or the batting, sorry, which is, I cut a little bit bigger than I needed because I'd rather have a little bit extra than not enough to fill in the edges. Then I'll remove the fabric from my uh, freezer paper. Now I'm going to check to make sure it covers everything because I don't want any raw edges from my joining strips to show. I want to cover those. So I'll add glue on the seam allowance here, but not where I want to sew through or else I'll just be making my life more difficult than it needs to be to sew this down. I should technically be trying to center this, but I'm not really that worried about it. That will do. 
And normally I would heat set this, but I'm not really in a hurry to finish it right now. I don't have time to sew it down. So I'm just going to use a ruler and a weight just to hold it flat so that all of everything is connecting. And I'll just let it dry naturally like that. So I'm going to finish the rest of this off camera, attach the center, slap on some binding, and then uh, this weekend I'll take it outside for some good nature shots so you can see the whole quilt all at once in some good natural lighting. 